Now, this is a bundle of optical fibers, thin strands of glass that can carry light. They've been used for communication for years. But now a team of British engineers have found a new way of using them to give objects the ability to feel stress. It's on structures like this that our lives depend, whether they make up the planes we fly in, the bridges we cross, or even the houses we live in. So lives could be saved if we could get advanced warning that they are about to break. Well, engineers have now come up with just that kind of warning system. And the secret is the beam of light that gets sent through the carbon fiber strut. Now, Lorna Everill and her team have worked out how to do it. How does it work, Lorna? The optical fibers are embedded within this, this strut such that it acts like a, its own human nervous system. So when you f it feels the strain when you bend it. Um, here you can see a representative picture which has got two sensors in, one here and one here. Wired up to the computer is another strut which we're about to break in a powerful compressor machine. Lorna's sensors will measure the strain to tell us how stressed it is. Black is unstressed, so it goes from black up oh, through blue, blue right, yes to turquoise, so this is when you're adding more and more stress. You what know. are we watching for? We know it's maximum stress. Right, red, red warning, so that's that's maximum stress, and at that point, the strut is going to break. It's gone red. Basically, it's about to break any time. <laughs> there it goes. And the great thing is, we got warning that it was going to go when it went red on your screen. Thanks to that system, yeah. It's one thing to ignore that warning in the lab, but quite another thing at sea. Last year, Tracy Edwards and her all-woman crew set off to circumnavigate the globe in record time. But in the middle of the Pacific, they ran into a huge storm. One of those on board was Helena Darwinin. The waves were pretty big, and we were sort of surfing down each wave, and there was a big surge, and we flew forward. And um, we just got up again, got ourselves together. And the other girl, Emma, she looked out of the hatch and she said, I think the mast has come down. Everything was just scattered around and just a total mess. It was just like spaghetti. Helena and the crew managed to salvage a piece of the mast and limped on to Chile a few days later. But their round the world attempt was over. Well, here in rather less challenging seas, Helena and I are going to try out a new breed of yacht. Helena, why don't you take over the wheel? Thank you. Good to have you back, safe and sound. Thank you. This is the first application of this optical nervous system in practice. Here we've got it for real in a, in a yacht called Smart. Let's see how smart it is, shall we? Let's go. OK, which way are we going? Smart's mast is called an aero rig. It's got no guy ropes to hold it up, so the mast can spin right round. Yo-ho! As the yacht changes direction. <laughs> well, because it's freestanding, this mast is under huge strain. And the incredible thing about this so-called aero rig is that it has woven into the mast optical fibers and sensors that go all the way up the mast and monitor the stresses and strains all the time. And this great network of fiber optic cables comes right the way down the mast here. Now, Lorna, how can light do the job of measuring the stresses on this mast? As you said, all the fiber optic cables are embedded within the mast. So if you take this as an example of your mast, and as you strain the mast, it reflects a different color of light. White light is beamed up the mast through the fibers and reflects back from sensors. The color of the light which bounces back depends on how stressed the mast is. So just by monitoring the colour reflected at each particular point along the mast, you can monitor the strain within it. Right, now all these fibre optic cables are taking this message back into the main saloon here, where there's a display to show what it looks like. And Helen is sitting in front of it now. Helen's getting a bit choppy around here right now. How is it showing up on your display? Yeah, you can see exactly the uh, strain on the mast with the sensor. Now, if it went red, you'd know that there was quite a lot of strain. Would that mean you'd sort of ease off one of the sails or something? That yeah, you can reduce sail and you can slow down a bit. I think it would be very useful because you can stop an emergency happening before it happens. You know exactly what you're doing. Ready about? Okay. Here we go. But of course, this technology could be applied to almost anything. For Lorna, the smart mast is just the beginning. The applications for our system currently are endless. 
only limited by your imagination. And since smarter structures are safer, this technology really could be saving lives very soon. Aircraft safety is on everyone's mind this week, so it's good to hear that engineers are already experimenting with putting that technology into aircraft wings. Now this is a model wing and running through it are those optical fibers. So if I stress the wing, you can see the readings there, each pressure point showing a different color there as I move the stress on the wing up and down. And that advanced warning of the dangerous stress levels could save lives. And also the optical fibres are going to be used in a bridge in the Millennium Dome to measure the load as people walk across it. Well, that's it for now. But we'll be back next week fighting back against the tyranny of the mobile with the technology that creates phone-free zones. And Lindsay Fallow finds out how to prevent devastating gas explosions. But until then... Goodbye. Goodbye.